So today I'm going to show you how to mount the carbon fiber 114 millimeter telescope from National Geographic onto a 3D printed Dobsonian mount. So the first thing you're going to have to do is uh, print the mount parts itself for the Dobsonian mount. The telescope, all you need is uh, the optical tube and then uh, the lenses and things that came with it. So uh, the, the different parts, we have a uh, base plate. This is what uh, the whole mount is going to rest on. It's just a thin piece of plastic. In the middle is a hole. Through that hole, we're going to put uh, the medium-sized screw. The link's in the description about the different sizes you're going to need. Um, that fits right through, and then we use a washer and a nut to hold that screw in place. You don't want that screw to, to move around on its own. You know, lock it in place. On the bottom of this, we're going to put uh, these feet. Now, uh, these feet, you want to make sure that they uh, don't move on the surface. You don't want them to be like these furniture pads. We'll show you how to use those a little bit later. So the slice rubber feet. And on the top of the feet that uh, this part's going to sit on, I just cut out some squares from a milk carton and just use double-sided tape to attach them there. And then that's what this is going uh, to move on. So this is uh, the main part of the Dobsonian mount. This is the part that has effectively the, the bearing for uh, our azimuth, so moving left to right. And uh, it's all one piece. Uh, once you get it printed out, uh, we're going to put uh, pieces of furniture pad right on the tops just like that, and that's what these altitude bearings are going to sit on. This just uh, slots uh, right over that screw that was there, and then we're going to take a thumb screw or a wing nut and we're going to tighten it down. Now don't make it too tight. You want this to be able to spin freely. All right, so now I have a little too tight, so we want to loosen that up a little bit more. And you can see that it spins freely. And when we add the weight of the telescope, it's going to work just great. We'll, we'll adjust the balance here in a little bit. So that's those two pieces. Uh, the other four pieces we have are the altitude bearings, which look like these wheels here. There's two of those, so print out two of those. And then we have the two pieces that are for the rings. Now there's two different designs. One is if you uh, took this dovetail mount off of the telescope here. Uh, the other is if you leave it on. I left it on because I still use this on a tripod occasionally. So I left that on. Um, so you can see I have that little piece that's there. Uh, the, the altitude bearings, they're going to attach with two screws on each side. Uh, those screws fit in you look inside there, there are uh, two screw holes, so the screws just go in that way, and then we use bolts to, to lock them in. You want to make sure those are good and tight. You don't want those rotating. And then I have another uh, uh, bolt and a nut that are going to attach the two rings together just on the one side. And you can do either side. Uh, and I did it here um, and left about a quarter inch gap. And so with that gap, we can now come back to telescope and line that up on our dovetail and there's little markings in the dovetail so I use the second marking down from the top right, second marking down from the top and then I'm going to take our long screw or, or bolt and then another thumb screw and then we're going to tighten that thumb screw down to secure these rings to the optical tube assembly. Okay, that's that's this uh, tube here that we're going to mount. So effectively, all we're doing is having a very convenient way of mounting these altitude bearings to the telescope without having to drill any holes or anything like that to the telescope itself. So once you get that thumb screw good and tight, uh, you should be able to lift it up and it won't slide. Um, and I would just once you lift it up the first time, it's going to maybe move a little bit. Once you've done that, make another tightening of that with a thumb screw. Uh, just be careful that you don't over tighten it. Uh, that, that's why we put that piece of felt underneath there. That piece of felt that you saw, that yellow piece of felt, really important to keeping that secure. So you can see we can easily lift this up. And then once we have it um, in place, we're going to mount it into our telescope the right way. Uh, so the way you want is to have where that dovetail is facing uh, this little bar here, so that way it can't over rotate. And then you can see that we have our nice azimuth rotation. And then on the altitude axis, see how much easier that is? You move it and it just stays in place. And even when it's there, you can 
you move the azimuth, and you see that it stays in place. Uh, we can add in an eyepiece. And this is going to be the critical part for you here, is to make sure the telescope is balanced. So find whatever your heaviest object is, or what your typical setup would be, set the telescope up like this, and make sure that it stays there. If it drops one way or the other, adjust it. So loosen the thumb screw on here, and then move it forward or backwards to find that balance point. Once you have that balance point, you can just leave the telescope in that position, uh, rotate it, and it'll stay there. So what that allows you to do is once you've locked onto a target, you can rotate it this way and track it for a little bit, and then you'll have to make an additional adjustment in the azimuth position, keep tracking it, make a little bit of adjustment, keep tracking it just like that. It uh, works beautifully. Um, the instructions are in the description. If you have questions, feel free to comment. Uh, if you have uh, additional you know, things you think might be improved, I'm happy to hear those and make improvements. Uh, thanks for watching, and good luck.